All right. Let me share my screen, desktop. Okay. Are you all seeing symbol sets on your screen? Yep. Okay, thank you. All right, the brief, what we're gonna be doing, we've just talked about the difference between symbols and icons. Symbols have tremendous potential for cross-cultural communication, as evident in airports, Olympic venues, and other places with diverse user groups. However, their extreme simplicity also risks the possibility of miscommunication. As cross-cultural communication grows and overlaps, symbols must become universal. In this project, you will design an iconic symbol that represents you. This mark must incorporate the idea of a daily procedure, ritual, habit, or something that you regularly do and has a specific sets of steps or objects that you could build a symbol set from. Please stay away from cliches and or flat items like paper, mirrors, etc. All designs must be your original artwork. No live trace, no freehand drawing, no borrowing from other symbols that you find on the internet. These must be your designs. The final design will include a set of three created symbols that define a moment, a ritual, or procedure. We will be creating mind maps, word tagging, and hashtags to create an interesting combination of marks. Starting from hand drawings, we will refine these hand drawings and begin working in Adobe Illustrator. The final symbols will be represented in two different scales, four inches by four inches and a one inch by one inch. In other words, symbols are designed to be working in a very small size. So we're gonna work big, but the idea is they must reduce and still be understandable and legible. Like if they were an icon on your iPhone, right? If they were on your iPhone, they need to work in that very small shape. So we're gonna go all the way down to one inch by one inch. Of course, a symbol on a phone is even smaller than that. So over the course, we're gonna follow the design processes that were laid out in Von Glitschka's LinkedIn learning tutorials that you all completed. So we're gonna be looking at creative preparation, which is really watching those tutorials as well. Word association and mind mapping, we're gonna start those today. Thumbnail sketching, selection of an appropriate style, gathering reference material, refinement of our drawn ideas, vector construction in Illustrator, refinement of your vector illustration, and then final presentation. Your design must certain, contain only original imagery and there can be no text. If your design incorporates any text, as an element of the symbols, it must be part of the illustrated concept, not explanatory, and be a self-created or modified or stylized font. But ideally, you don't want any text. You may use black and one additional color if justified. All sketches, reference material, and developmental stages, prints of vector construction must be saved for inclusion in your required process book, which is due along with your finished project. Your process book will be evaluated based on being a record of clear and conscious progression of the, of the design process. There will also be an assessment value placed on midpoint and final written critical reflections. The time dated LinkedIn learning required tutorials from project two will be included in that process book and neatness and organization is a, is a must. The final presentation, you wanna make sure that the page size is correct and that 100% black color you use choose is in the swatch panel and the links are not showing any errors. Your final images will be saved as both a PDF and an illustrator file, AI equals illustrator file. We're gonna use the provided template, show your final concept at two sizes, small one inch by one inch and large four inch by four inch. And you're gonna organize your three icons in a balanced and organized manner in one illustrator page. We're gonna upload our final PDF to AI and AI files as well as your process book to the Blackboard assignment Dropbox. We're gonna post on Mural for final critique. So let me show you an example of what this looks like from, from students that have done this in the past. Here's an example of a finished project by a student about 
something that they're personally interested in, which is plants. And so what does it take to make a plant grow? So you have a plant, if you water it, and then you see it grow. So three steps. Another one, someone who loves coffee, works at a coffee shop. So showing their apron, they're making espresso and serving it. Someone who loves birthday parties, the idea of all the things that a birthday party contain, a pinata, birthday cake, and presents. Okay, so these are three examples of symbols for, this one's for birthday, the symbol set for making coffee, a ritual of making coffee, and this is one for growing a plant. And it can be anything that you care about. Um, it should be something that you care about that is personal to you, something that you, matters to you. And it needs to be something that you can show in three steps. So three steps are important. And we're gonna highly stylize it to a very simplified symbol. So the first part of this is we're gonna start with mind mapping. So we've already done mind mapping when we did our, our mural first day um, icebreaker, which had us mind map um, about what we were looking to learn about in this class. So we're gonna start again, working on a mind map, start with a circle in the center of your page, and you can do this on your mural board and do it digitally. You can do it on a sketchbook or a notebook in front of you. You're gonna write the description of the problem inside the circle. So what's your, what is the ritual you're thinking about? So you might wanna think about what are things that I love you know, to do? It can be anything or that I do every day. You know, it can be, it can be anything about um, really anything. It's completely open-ended. Each participate, uh, so what we're gonna do is you're gonna wanna think about as many ideas as you can. And so you might wanna start off with like, what are things that are important to me um, that could be potential ideas for this project? So you can kind of just go through your day and think, okay, like I wake up every day, I make my bed, I brush my teeth, I brush my hair, I take a shower, I get dressed. Maybe there's um, something that you're, you, you love to do, like, I don't know, paint your fingernails or, cook breakfast, you maybe you fry an egg every morning or make a smoothie or think of all the things you do and what matter to you and how you can think that into a three-step ritual to show, in other words, if you were showing someone how to do something that doesn't speak the same language as you. That's really when we think about symbols. The idea to teach someone how to do something and think about how you can do that without using any words. So that's the ultimate visual communication. Think about how many of you have gone to Ikea, right? Have anyone gone to Ikea and gotten any piece of furniture that they tell you how to put it together? They don't use any words, it's all symbols. It's all symbols teaching you how to put your chair together or your bookshelf or whatever you've bought. So <clears throat> start with a mind map to help you start thinking of ideas of what you could possibly do. And then you put that in the circle you know, they can say my day, and then you can put all the things that you do. And then from each one of those things, like what are the different steps that I do to create that thing? So if I'm doing, you know, brush my teeth, one of my things, I'm, my, one of my circles, um, I might put my day in the front and in the middle. And then one of the, my branches is brush my teeth. And then I might think, okay, I start with my toothbrush. I put toothpaste on it. Maybe I, um, and then I brush my teeth and rinse. I also use floss. What do I do to take care of my teeth? You know, it could be all about that. Um, anything you wanna share about how to do something. So we're gonna work, uh, have a little time today to work on what those ideas might be. And then you can, um, like I said, you can do it on a piece of paper. You can do it on your mural board, either way. Um, to kind of get that mind going. And so it's basically a diagram used to visually outline your information. These are different examples of what mind maps can look like, right? They can just be very simple. They don't have to be fancy. 
The idea is that you just want to put out what is your middle idea and then do little branches around it to kind of get as many ideas flowing as possible. And this is one of the things that Von Glitschka shared with in his um, tutorials as a first step. Once we've done our mind map, we're going to then move into thumbnail sketching. And thumbnail sketching, I wanna be real clear, is a very quickly drawn idea that gets a visual um, idea noted down on paper before it flees. So you wanna just basically think about as many ideas that can be done without editing or evaluating the quality of the idea. The goal is for a vast number of ideas. The idea here is qu quantity, not quality. Because sometimes those crazy ideas are the ones that are gonna be the most interesting. And you might dismiss things that are really interesting to other folks in your group when we start discussing these. The experience of thumbnail sketching is different for everyone, but the common experience should be an array of options which later can be filtered down through evaluation. When you sit down to do your thumbnail sketches, it's a good idea to have your mind map in front of you to help you visualize and keep those ideas flowing. So the idea of, of sketches and thumbnails are, these are not fancy sketches. These are not if, you know things that maybe everyone can even recognize. The idea is that there's just lots of ideas. You're putting lots of ideas down and you're thinking through what things could possibly be. So these shouldn't be um, thought of as these have to be super fancy or, um, or sophisticated. They need to be, that doesn't mean they should be messy or unorganized. They should still be organized. And because we're working digitally, it's important to um, number your different designs. So when we're sharing them digitally, people can say, I like number one, two, four, six. It's helpful to have numbers. So I would encourage you to add numbers as you're thinking through your ideas. I'm gonna pause here and see, I'm gonna go back to the project sheet and see if we have some questions. Will you have um, the design examples available for us to like look at on Blackboard just for like, okay, cool. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Other questions? I'm and gonna like, introduce, oh, go ahead. Sorry. So like, I have like an idea of like what I can do, um, which is like a series of like different image, like symbols that mean like a story. Like for example, like a waffle, a tornado, and then like a ring. What's the ritual you want to start with the not the icons, but start or the symbols start with the with the ritual. What's the ritual you want to communicate? Uh, <laughs> right. Um, right. So you got to start with the ritual. What's the ritual? Uh, so basically, um, how how I met the person that I am with today. That might be too complicated. I think you want to simplify to something, unless you can make it very simple. Remember, it's only three steps and it has to be something that communicate without words. Okay. I mean, you know what I'm saying? So it's, that's tricky. Even if we were like trying to show like Cinderella's story of how she met her Prince Charming, that still would be kind of hard to do in three steps. That's fair. So I would think about something that's a little more simplified for this assignment. Okay. Let me share with you all a strategy I have for, to, for all of you to help you organize and stay on track with a bigger assignment like this. So one of the things I've been looking for is I know we are, being that we are um, a hybrid and we have a lot of asynchronous work to do when we're not together and we're only together for the short amount of time, um, one of the things I want to see you, uh, oops, looks like Brenda got kicked out. Um, 
is to organize your project so that you can stay on track. So what I've done is I've taken assignment four and I've created a work plan that I want you all to fill out today. And so what this is, this is the first step before we even start our mind map. I want you to take this is up on Blackboard and it's its own assignment that you'll wanna hand in and it's due on Monday. And I want you to see that I've put every step of this assignment um, over here on the left. So the first step is creative preparation. The deadline for this was last Friday and this was your LinkedIn learning account uh, tutorials by Von Glitschka because no, going through those tutorials is gonna help you with your illustrator skills needed to do this assignment. So if you didn't finish your Von Glitschka LinkedIn learning tutorials, you'll need to fill this in. And the way this works is you start with what is the task? What's the deadline? And I filled in all the deadlines for this assignment in here. And then for yourself, you wanna tell yourself, look at your schedule and say, what day and date can I schedule to do this work? How much time do I need to do this work? Where am I gonna do this work? I'm getting some extra sound. I'm gonna, maybe it's, maybe it's Maddie, okay. Um, where am I gonna do this work? Where do you work best? Depending on the task at hand. So if you're watching a tutorial, is that something you can do um, in your living room while your rest of your family might be watching TV or eating dinner? Is that gonna be too distracting and you're gonna not be able to pay attention? Maybe that's not the best location. So I want you to think about the day and date that you're gonna do the work. And it can be multiple days. It can be, I'm gonna do Monday from three to four. So Monday, and then I'm gonna put, and then put the block of time from three to four. And then Wednesday from six to seven or what have you. And you're gonna put the block of time you're gonna spend, the location of where you're gonna spend it. And then what supplies are needed. So for this first one, LinkedIn learning account registration is needed to complete the task, which is uh, doing your tutorials. Then we have the word association math, math, word associations and mind mapping. So Friday, that's today, in class, we're gonna start. So you're gonna start it, but you might not finish it. We're, we're probably not gonna finish it, but it might you might get a start on it. So then what other additional day and time do you need to do the work? How much time is it gonna take? Where are you gonna do the work? What location? What supplies needed? Well, you can do this on mural but you might also wanna do it on a sketchbook. You can do that and then you'll need a sketchbook and a pencil. The deliverable is you're gonna need a final word mind map and the word association posted to Slack, your Slack channel, your mural board and saved your process book. That's the deliverable, right? And the, the idea is that this is completed today. Thumbnail sketching is our next step, which you're gonna do asynchronously. So that is due on Tuesday, this next Tuesday coming up. So again, you're gonna fill in the day and date to do the work, the block of time, the location, the supplies needed. And then this is what is expected, 15 sets. When I say set, I mean three sketches because there's three, I, three symbols you're creating. So three symbols equals one set. So 15 sets of three. And you're gonna put those on your Slack channel and reach out to your group members by using the at symbol in their name for feedback. Then the next is we're gonna select an appropriate style. That'll be due by next Thursday before class. What do I mean by style? Well, you're noticing from all the examples I showed in my lecture, as well as you can look on, on internet, how many different styles, symbols can come in? Is it a thick line? Is it a heavy, is it a thin line? Is it um, rounded corners? Is it hard edges? You know, got to think about what si what style you want to make your icons in when you move into Illustrator. So getting examples of different icon sets that you've looked at and seeing all the different styles out there. What styles are you looking to emulate? Okay. Showing examples of that. Post that on your Slack channel. Moving into gathering reference. This is reference material of the actual objects that you're trying to emulate in your symbol. So let's say I'm going back to my toothpaste story 
So I might have pictures of what does a tube of toothpaste look like? What does a picture of a toothbrush look like? What does a picture of, of floss look like? And I'm gonna put all those references images on my mural board. So I have those reference of those actual objects in front of me when I'm drawing them out. So I have those because I'm gonna be looking to now refine my drawings to look more like the actual objects and, and, and stylize them, but I need reference of what those objects look like. So you have the ref refinement of the drawn ideas that'll be due um, for Friday in class on the 21st, that's a week from today. And we're gonna review the refined sketches um, posted on your mural in Slack. Vector construction will then follow. The following week, we'll move into our vector work. So in other words, between today and next Friday, everything we're doing is sketching, drawing with our pencil on paper, or if you're using a tablet, it can be a tablet like Procreate and sketching. It's not using Illustrator yet. We're just sketching. The following week, we'll move into vector construction. And then um, the following week after that, um, on the fourth is the final presentation. So this project will be three weeks total. And I wanna see how you're organizing your time for the next three weeks for this assignment based on these deadlines and what's a, what needs to be done for the deliverable. Okay, so um, I just realized I spelled deliverable wrong. Um, so this needs to be filled out and it's an Excel sheet and hand it in by Monday. So this is due on Monday so that you're taking and project managing yourself for the projects we're doing in this class. So the idea here is when we're working remotely, when we're working asynchronously, it's helpful to have a schedule and a plan so that we can get the work done that's being assigned. And I think that's one of the things that is, um, important. Most of the time when I've worked in my career, I've worked remotely most of my career. And this has been a, a career that started back in the 90s. And so I would work and we would create work plans that we would share with our whole team of who's doing what, what are the deliverables, when is that happening every day of the week. And so this is something that I need you to be um, looking at for your own schedule Yes, you have jobs, you have other classes, you have a life. So you need to schedule your time in for this class to get the work done that needs to be done. Doing it the night before it's due is never a great strategy. So this I'm hoping will be helpful for all of you to take some ownership and you decide what works for you to get the work done that we're assigning in this class. Does anyone have any questions or thoughts about completing the work plan, which is gonna be the first step. No questions. Okay. So this will be due on Monday. Um, in the assignment Dropbox, I'm Blackboard. So, Again, all of our assignments, we will be putting them up on Blackboard. And so this will go up on Blackboard. The, what we'll do now is move into our small groups. I'm gonna go ahead and um, stop sharing so that we have some, uh, some time to get started on a brainstorming session. And I think it helps to be in our small group so that you guys can kind of share thoughts and ideas about what you might be thinking about, you might want to do. Um, I know just like um, Angelica had an idea right off the bat, which is great, and I'm guessing all of you do. But I want you to all help each other think about the scope of the project and what we're trying to do. It's three steps. So it really needs to be pretty simple, a simple idea. And the examples I showed you were pretty simple. So again, it's symbols showing us how to do something in three steps. So it has to be pretty simplified. Um, and it can be about anything that somehow relates to you that you have some connection to, okay? Um, 
So I'm going to move us into random groups, I think, this time. And where are we at? I'm going to put us into three groups of four, and then um, I'll let you guys have a chance. And I'm going to just pull a few of you out or one of you out at a time, just because there's a few people I want to meet with. And then I'm also going to reach out those I don't get to meet with because we're going to run out of time today that I want to set up a one-on-one -on -one office hours with everybody this week so that I can touch base with all of you one-on-one. -on -one. And so my office hours are all listed on our Slack. So if I don't meet with you, I will reach out to you directly and say, what time can we meet during the week coming up so that we all meet one-on-one -on -one before we meet again on Friday next week, okay? All right, I'm gonna create these rooms and I'm gonna open all rooms. Aaron, did you get in a room? Fabian, is it not letting you in a room? Aaron, are you having a problem getting into your room? Hi, Professor Decker. Hi, I wanted to pull you aside just to touch base with you as I appreciate you reaching out to me. And I wanted to take a minute to talk with you if you don't mind for a minute. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Does your uh, camera not work or is it it's oh, working, right? Sorry. Um I, was... I had <laughs> I had turned it off um for the last break and I forgot to turn it back on. No worries. All right. So I wanted to just touch base with you on how you're doing and move because I want to move you into um, know that you're moving forward and, and able to keep up. And I wanted to see what where you're at with things and what we can do to make sure that you're successful mm -hmm. in class. Yeah. Um, I well, first of all, I think that the, um, what you were just talking about, the uh, Excel um schedule thing will be really helpful um, God. God. I, I mentioned in my email that i've been having a pretty rough week i um hopefully it's dealt with and good. yeah good well i'm hoping the work plan will help you and many others just kind mm -hmm. of have a structure to work in this new format and i know it's, is this your first online class or a hybrid class so far? Um, it is my first hybrid class. Yeah, because most okay. of them I've had just like a normal VCM. I haven't really had this type of class before. Um, okay. I mean, I have had a hybrid class where it was in person and okay. like online, but not not this kind of thing. Okay, okay. Just pulling up your um, where we're at. So. Right now, we're looking at project two, project three. Um, your student contract needs to be completed. Oh, I totally forgot about that. Um, yeah, uh, okay. So the student contract should be pretty easy to do. Um, the project two thing, I did the second part of it. The, um, I mean, I showed it in my presentation today. Um, and I did the first part of it but then I think I got lost in between because I, I sent in my Slack, I sent the um, my shapes and stuff. You put that on Mural? Did you put it on the Mural oh, board? I didn't put it on Mural, I put it on Slack. Okay, 
So there's a mural board for project two specifically. Mm -hmm. And did you share your shape with the rest of your group members so they could create their group shape? No. Okay. Yeah, so, that, so, so that's there's, part where I got. Um, okay. So for project two, there's a mural board for project two, which lets you put your single shape design on it and then a group so that, and you share that with your group and then you combine your shape with the other members of your group to create mm -hmm. a, a shape for everybody. Okay. 